Now, what about cancer? About 90% increase in cancer death when the type 2 diabetic goes on insulin therapy. And with heart disease, it actually goes up by about three times. So when we give the diabetic, the type 2 diabetic, more insulin in this disease that is already a disease of excess insulin, we are making them fatter and we are killing them faster. All right, now, as we come back to this wheel of misfortune, <laughs> and I am some demented version of your game show host <laughs> who's focusing on this, what's interesting is that it makes this view all the more puzzling because most of these diseases have either nothing to do with blood glucose or very, very little. In other words, glucose is providing very little, if any, influence on any of these variables. But insulin is affecting all of them. These are all somewhat related to the insulin, not the glucose. But the glucose influences the insulin, so it's not irrelevant. And then let's move into diet. Now, within the diet, there are three macronutrients, the main parts of the human diet. They are fats, proteins, and carbohydrates. Now, if you look globally, and, and I've given various versions of this talk literally around the world, um, uh, even this year and more to go because it's such a problem around the world. If you look at diet con uh, macronutrient consumption around the world, um, the, av the global diet is about 70% carbohydrate. Um, and again, this is the global population. <clears throat> and then the, the remainder split somewhat between protein and fat as a total percent of calories consumed. So we as a global population overwhelmingly consume carbohydrate. Now, unfortunately, more and more of that is highly refined carbohydrate that comes from a bag or a box with a barcode. Now, what do these macronutrients do to insulin? This is a reproduction that I'm going to show you, literally overlaid on, a, on this particular study. So nothing I'm showing is making up, and indeed, I have my own data from my own lab um, where we have confirmed these. When someone eats pure fat, which we don't do very often, you have no insulin response whatsoever. If someone eats pure protein, you have no insulin response. If someone eats pure carbohydrate, now insulin will go up by about 10 to 20 times and it'll take about three hours to come back down. Remember, that's in an insulin sensitive person. If this is an insulin resistant person, it would have come up and still been going until about five or so hours. And depending on the amount of glucose consumed of carbohydrate, um, it can be elevated for up to 14 hours. If you eat like a three bowls of cereal, which is easy to do for me, that is my one true vice. But if I were to eat three big bowls, it will take my insulin 10 hours plus or, or more to come back down. Um, now, let's just look at this in a slightly different way, um, but same overall thing. So no effect. Protein maybe, depending on the person, um, there can be a very small effect, but pure carbohydrate, large effect. But of course, the type of carbohydrate matters. I don't want you to think I'm declaring war on carbohydrates as a class. I'm not. Um, unfortunately, the type of carbohydrate matters, um, unfortunately, being that we don't eat the right ones. If it's typically vegetables or the lesser tropical fruits, um, there's very little effect. Um, if it, the vegetable grows above the ground or things like berries or some citrus fruit, the, the insulin response is very, very modest, if at all. Unfortunately, those are not the carbohydrates most people eat. Most people eat refined starches and sugars, eating or drinking them. Um, but just to help you appreciate the effect of the carbohydrate, this study was done in young, healthy, college-aged students, and they had them eat a higher amount of carbohydrates for one week. And over the week, their, blood, their fasting glucose levels were normal. So the fasting glucose levels weren't changing over this week. And I'm emphasizing fasted. So even in their fasted state, like they fast all night and they come in for a blood draw. If you look at the insulin levels over just seven days at a fasted state, they went up by two and a half times. Higher insulin, normal glucose, this is insulin resistance at its earliest stage. If this experiment kept going, the insulin would continue to climb and then eventually it wouldn't be able to control the glucose and then that would start to climb as well. And what I want to impress upon you is the importance of not ignoring the glucose, but saying glucose, you matter, but you actually matter a little less than the insulin does. And so I'm gonna get my insulin measured at my next blood test.